Blah, y'all already know what it is. Your boy, Yako, what it do? The outlet to reality, the oldest podcast in Vegas and Chicago. What up? This is the place where you want to hide from your drama or maybe hide from your baby mama. <laughs> Just kidding. But anyways, fans, thank you for staying tuned, for listening. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Cha-ching! And today we have a very, very special guest who is a really good friend of mine. Right? for students with autism give it up for shannon hey <laughs> hi <laughs> i'm so happy you're here girl this this makes my day like honestly <laughs> i'm really excited to talk i i've been uh telling everybody i have a podcast at 11 a.m i gotta i gotta get my stuff together i gotta get ready to talk about autism and talk with david and um someone was like why are you doing this i'm like David's the best, duh, like anything, anything for David. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited. Thank you. That, that made my day. That, that touched my heart right here. So thank you. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> I got a good story to share with us that I could remember. It's one of my favorite stories. So for those who don't know, Shannon and I, uh, we work together at a school and Every Friday before I was about to leave, I would tell Shannon, Shannon, there's something I have to tell you. And she's like, what's that? I have to go out. <laughs> that was the, I have to. And you're like, why you keep saying it like you have to go out? No, but you don't understand. I have to go out. People are waiting. I'm looking fresh today. I got my hair cut. I just can't miss the opportunity. And I used to make you laugh so hard. <laughs> so that's that I have to go. Yeah. I have to. <laughs> that's so true. So that's a, a good story that I can remember, like a catchphrase that I always said. And what about you, Shan? Anything you can remember of me? So I remember when you interviewed and um, you came um, like with a tie on and the rest of us um, at our school, because our kids have like really intense needs, we typically don't dress up. You know, I wear a t-shirt, I wear leggings, I wear sweatshirts. And David came in with this really nice tie and we're like, oh, this guy's like really serious. And then flash forward like six months. And every morning when David came to work, what up fam? Walking into the classroom. And I always tell people, I'm like, David was the best because he always listened to like um, you know, advice that we would give about working with the students. Um, but he was always like, so lighthearted and like ready to party. Um, oh, my cat is here. Hi, Puff. Oh. <laughs> like, she's like, I want to get on camera. Um, but anyway, she, um, but anyway, you always were like super serious about taking good care of the guys, but also like so fun to be around and um, you know, you had to go to the party. You had to go out that night. So I always just think about that. And the next day you come in and you're like, Hey, everybody, you know, a little bit more chill and, uh, like you had gone out. So I thought that that was, that was, that's how I remember you and how I describe you to people who don't know you. I'm like, we used to have this para David and he would walk in the classroom and be like, what up fam? And we would all get like really excited and be like shaking our heads about it. Oh man, no, that's amazing. I, I'm I'm glad you said you. And to be honest, it's one of my favorite places if I've ever worked. I think it's till this day. If I could, if I would go back, I love it. Um, but real quick, Shannon, so my fans to get to know you a little bit more. Um, uh, what? Yeah. Tell us a little bit, like what, um, where your family from, and like your neighborhood, and if you were like born and raised in Chicago, any hobbies that you have. Yeah, so I um, was born and raised in Naperville, Illinois, which is like a pretty, you know, cookie cutter suburb. Um, I decided that I wanted to go to Loyola to be a special ed teacher. So I um, moved to the city and never moved back to Naperville. So I've been in the city for about nine years. Um, my neighborhood at home was like pretty typical suburban, you know, your, your friends live across the backyards and you ride the bike and you ride your bike in the street and um, so it was, it was pretty typical and, um, you know, a really cool thing about Naperville is that a lot of people there, um, move there because the schools are really good. And so there's like really big populations of people with disabilities. Um, and that's kind of how I, I know this is a question coming up, but like, 
that's how I kind of got into um, working with people with disabilities because there's so many kids and they do like all these different activities in the city, like they are in Naperville where they have like special Olympics and they have special recreation. And, um, and so that was like a really fun thing uh, about Naperville. Um, some of my hobbies, um, well, you heard my cat, um, <laughs> I'm into cats, which is if, if you knew me, you're like, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I am currently, uh, training to compete for a powerlifting competition. Whoa. Um, so lifting weights, working out all the time. Um, I like cooking, I like baking, um, you know, all those quarantine activities. Uh, but I'm really into powerlifting right now, which is like, I ordered, do you know what a singlet is? No, I don't know what that is. It's like what wrestlers wear to wrestle. It's like a tank top, but it's also shorts. Like it's one outfit and it's kind of funny. Um, but I ordered one of those for, that's what you have to power lift in. So we'll see how it goes, but wow. um, I'm really excited about that. Yeah. I saw you like you had like, I don't know how many plates you had, but you did one that was, looks really heavy. I was like, I don't think I could do it. And <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know if it, I, I'm, I'm assuming it had to be like at least 200. Was it 200 or 230 or? I I can squat 170 and I can deadlift 215. Um, I'm working so hard on my squat up to get up to over 200 because that's a huge like milestone. So um, yeah, it's, but it gets heavy and you get kind of like, oh, am I going to get like crushed underneath this barbell? Right. <laughs> um, but it's been, it's been really fun and um you know, tiring, but very rewarding. Um, it's a good way to relieve stress for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And when yeah. is your like competition? Like, is it coming up or it's at the end of July? Um, so I have a few months, um, of training left trying to get like as strong as possible before then. And there's like some, um, like method to the madness. Like you kind of work up to a certain weight and then you, you kind of, back off a little bit so that your body can like rest for that big day where you do all three lifts, you do your bench, deadlift and squat. And then, um, like you do, you know, you do those, you practice those, but you also do like little stuff on the side to help build your muscles. So if you ever want to talk about powerlifting, I have a coach. I'm sure he would love to talk to you about that too. Yeah. Um, He's really cool. Yeah. So I'll, I'll put, I'll put you in contact with him and, um you should he knows way more than me i'm like like a bait i'm just learning um (laughs) but he's a coach so he you know he knows it all oh cool cool that's awesome i'm I'm happy for you girl i I hope you you. do your thing you know thank (laughs) you (laughs) i would flex but it would be embarrassing (laughs) (laughs) oh man so the next the next question i have for you uh shannon and i feel like i feel like this is actually a topic that I want to talk about because a lot of people don't know or understand, and mm-hmm. which is uh, what is autism for those who don't know. So um, autism is a is a neuro um, developmental disability. Um, so it's inside of your brain. Um, there are certain traits of autism that come that appear um, like in your physical being. Um, A lot of people with autism have low muscle tone, so they might be kind of bent over. Um, If they're, you know, walking around a lot, sometimes they move their body in different ways. Um, But it's really just, you know, our, like you and I can be considered neurotypical. Like we developed as typical as the medical books say. Um, But for people with autism, somewhere and they're not exactly sure um that development was interrupted and changed so um we caught like they're not neurotypical they're neurodiverse so it's something that's you know their brain functions in a different way than ours and that comes across in many different ways um but through the whole spectrum of autism um it comes out in social uh, skills and your ability to like relate to other people and, and also communication is a big part of it. 
Um, so some people can communicate like you and I who have autism. Um, other people, as you know, um, our participants at our school um, don't talk at all. Um, some don't even make noises. Um, or every now and then they might, but uh, it really depends on the kid. Um, so yeah, I think that's like the biggest, the be- like the best definition of it. Um, but we always say, you know, if you've met a person with autism, you've met one person with autism because no autism is the same. There are similar characteristics and traits that people have, but everybody is just like you and I, like very different. Like it's very um, unique to the person with autism. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I actually, yeah. Cause a lot of, a lot of times I, I hear people say this and it gets me, you know, frustrated when they're like, mm-hmm. Oh, it's, it's very simple. It's, it's, it's the black and white like like very like a binary concept and i'm like nah it's not like that it's very different there's different levels of autism different you know perspectives i try to break it down because i'm like i will fight for my students i till this day yeah. i love them so much and you know mm-hmm. what this is very interesting with you so one day i was invited for dinner and uh for a jewish family and the guy who was like the head of the house he was a rabbi and I, he asked me for in front of everyone in the table. He asked me like, w- uh, "What do you do for work?" And I was like, "Oh, I, you know, I work at a school with you know students with autism." He's like, "Wow, that's amazing. That's like a that's a beautiful thing. A lot of people don't have patience to do that." Mm-hmm. And he shared me a, a really nice story that I've never heard of. He's like, "I'm going to share you a story. I hope you like it, but it's something that actually happened." I was like, "Okay." So he's like. In the in the orthodox, he said that uh, um, if you ha- if someone comes into the to a class or anywhere, and they're older than you, you have to in our culture stand up as a re- sign of respect because they're the elders, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. I'm you know, I, I mean, I usually know when the door opens, I gotta get up, right? Because I gotta get the door. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, that's pretty interesting. So one time, there's a story that happened in Israel back in the days, he said, that a bunch of teenagers were studying with the rabbi. And the door opened, and it was a student who had uh, autism. Mm-hmm. And, and the rabbi got up, the teacher of the of, and all the students were like, teacher, why did you get up? Like, he's not an elder, you know, like, I don't understand. And the rabbi actually corrected him. I, he's like, get up. And when he got, they all got up, right? Because that's the teacher, the whole staff, we got, the teacher, mm-hmm. you know, the teacher told us to get up. And then the teachers, I mean, the students, the teacher again, they're like, wait, but teacher, I don't understand still. Like, why did you get up? And he understand this is more spiritual than you. And mm-hmm. we can learn something from him. And I love that. I love that. So, that story right there, oh, it broke my yeah. heart. I was like, it made my day because I'm like, I-, I love it. I I love, you know, you know how yeah. I am. I, I think what's important um, is that our students with autism or anyone with autism just, pers- you know, has a different perspective. Like they experience the world a little bit differently than we do. And I think that can come across as like being very spiritual, like being you know, and a lot of people with autism get hyper-focused on things. Um, They can, you know, it's a very like kind of divine thing. Um, And I think it's heartbreaking, but it's also really awesome um, to people, for people to respect how people are different because this is like the, the main, like it's a, it's a big difference um, between like myself and one of my students, but like you said, we can learn a lot from autism and how people experience the world. So I think that's, a, that's an awesome story. I've never heard that either. Um, that's really cool. Right. I was mm-hmm. like, I had to share this. I had to, I had to. <laughs> and, and also too, like, I felt like um, one thing too, working at the school, mm-hmm. was my last day leaving, and I said bye to everybody. You remember you guys gave me like a, a like a yearbook, like a goodbye yeah. book. 
I looked at that and I, I got, I was so happy. I was like, man, I'm going to miss everybody. And when I flew back, like I was flying to Vegas, I, uh, I opened a letter from one of my students, which you already know who it was. Mm-hmm. Opened that letter and I start crying. And mm-hmm. It touched my heart so much because uh, each student, what I realized and from working is that each student brings a different, like, you know, there's a different way you have to communicate to that mm-hmm. student that mm-hmm. makes them happy. Because mm-hmm. not everybody goes in the same, like, it's not the same. So I I didn't have favorites. I just, I just get happy. Like, whoever it was, I was like, all right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. And I feel like um, because I had so much energy, I had a lot of, like, um, uh, like I could share this because, I, you know, I don't work there no more. But real quick, we did have one student who didn't want to go outside. You remember? Mm-hmm. And I was mm-hmm. like, Shannon, I got a great idea. And she's like, what? How about after lunch, <laughs> I take this to the outside? And it started off for a minute and mm-hmm. then eventually went for 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Shannon, we did it. I got an extra time. You remember that? I do. And that student it likes being outside now and will be and tolerates being outside for 30 to 45 minutes. Like he currently is, he's so happy right now. Like sometimes, you know, through the pandemic, he really struggled um, because um, so for you guys that don't know, our school is connected to a children's group home, which means that um, you know, we kind of operate under the same umbrella. We have the school. And then when, um, some of our students are finished with school, like during the day, they take the bus to a group home. And so they live there because they need, um, 24 seven care. Um, and a lot of them have like different family circumstances, but the pandemic was really hard for them because they're used to like going out and going with their families and they had to stay at the house. Um, and this student really struggled, but coming back to school has been doing awesome, doing so awesome. David would do um, gym class outside with this guy. And I swear, I swear if David came to visit, this student would light up. He would have the biggest smile. He would get really excited. Um, He, he 100%, I would know he 100% remembers you. And I think he would be like, and I, Paula said, come visit any time. Like, we'll see about the pandemic. But um, when you do come back to Chicago, like, I hope like that story is a good example. But you made a really big impact on a lot of students just with your energy and your awareness that like every student has a different way of you have a different way of bonding with all of them, just like your friends, like, you know, if we talk, we talk about like autism and work. But if you talk to one of your friends, you might talk about like sports and like parties that you've gone to um, or whatever. Um, but yeah, those those guys, he loved his time with David and they would both wear their little beanies outside when it was cold and he had his coat and he loved going out there. He loved hanging out with David. Wow. That makes yeah. me happy that he, he loves yeah. going outside now. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, see, and here's the thing. I, when I came to Vegas, I actually met with a principal and mm. he was like, you know, I'm looking for some paras that, um, that specialize with, you know, I have students that have autism and I love that. And I was like, I'll be, I'm ready to work. I even told him, I said, look, if you need me to start next week, mm-hmm. you know, and I'll be there next week. And he goes, I know. so, I almost got a job for a school, mm-hmm. but like the thing is, I think my certification got expired. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, because it's been a minute. Yeah. Um, but I told him that I'm willing to take that test if I have to do the whole CPR, you know, all the the whole yes. process that I have to take. I said, look, I'm I'm willing to do it. Uh, I haven't got back with him, um, but that's one thing I could say is that you know working at a school, I think was, it's a lot of what people don't understand. It's his jobs out there. 
hands down because it's emotional. Like mm -hmm. sometimes you get very connected with the student. Um, also it could be mental, you know, you have to, you know, keep that mindset, you know, strong. Yeah. And kind of a, a step ahead of them to like, make sure that they're the most successful because a lot of the times they don't, um, plan well, or they have anxiety about what's going to happen. So you kind of have to anticipate like, oh, so we have a student who, um, who would go, the student that went outside with David, he struggled after lunch because he wanted to go home. He said, lunch is finished. I'm going to go hop on the bus and go home. And we were like, hmm. and David said, let's go outside to kind of interrupt that. And David had to think through that plan. We had to plan for the student to um, be successful. And it's a lot of planning. Um, and once you learn the kids, it's a little bit easier, but coming in new, um, is trying like, and trying to get to know all of their little, um, all the things that they need to be successful in the day. It's a lot of thinking, a lot of thinking. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And yeah. what else I was going to tell you, but yeah, so it's, it's definitely one of the best schools. I, I love it till this day. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I wouldn't it, go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, I think you were saying like the job is really hard. You're emotional, mental, physical, um, that's another thing, like a lot of people don't understand um, our students, my students might hurt you. And it is not because they want to hurt you. It's because they're trying to communicate something. Um, and many of our students at our school have an intellectual disability as well as autism. So um, their ability to cope with change or um, you know, it might be that they can't communicate like, oh, my foot hurts or I'm hungry or I'm thirsty. And um, it's almost like you have to know, read their minds a little bit. And because they might not say it, they might not make those noises or do a, a sign. But um, I think, you know, if people see somebody in the community that's having a hard time, um, just know that like that person is not violent um but they're using like their body and aggression to communicate that they're upset and and what we do is we try very hard and you know it comes and goes to um teach them like oh if you're upset this is what you can do um instead of you know hitting or biting you can use your words and say i feel sick or i don't like that or I want a milkshake or something along those lines. Um, but it's definitely, it, it takes, it's your whole body is experiencing this job because you're, like you said, emotional, mental, physical. Um, yeah. So I think that's a great point to make of it's a really hard, it's hard, but it's very rewarding. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. Um, what else I was going to tell you, but yeah, like I think, that's amazing, Shannon. I'm I'm really proud of you, girl, to to keep doing it. Uh, it's so inspiring, even for a lot of young people out there, you know. Yeah. Because once they leave the school, I feel like that experience that they had will always be a part of them. Oh, for sure, definitely, I agree. Now, I do want to say something. Yes. And uh, Shannon, I'm very curious to pick at your brain at this part. Yes. So I feel that teachers and paras sometimes no more about the student than the parent. Mm. Yeah. So your, I think your question was like about the relationship between teachers and parents or like teachers and paras and parents, um, which is a really big component of my job is to talk to the parents and communicate, especially during a pandemic when these kids are at home all the time about how the student is doing or at home. But you're right, like the, the paras and the teachers know best practices. We know what works for a student. We see them and we have very realistic expectations. But different parents go through different grieving processes when they have a student with either um, a very severe intellectual disability or the, their autism um, 
they're struggling with the th- things that come along with their autism. So like, um, for example, we had a student who really struggled with his relationship with food and he would, you know, was aggressive towards his mom and his sister because he wanted to eat or he wanted the food to be gone. And like, we have our idea of what we can do, but that's a whole nother experience for the parent when they might have to call 911, they might have to go in the bathroom and lock the door. Um, so I always try to take the perspective of like, I chose to do this job. These parents did not choose to have a person take care of a person with a disability. They love doing it, but we also have to remember, like they have these kids a lot longer than we do. Um, and I can be patient for six and a half hours a day, but can I be patient 24 hours a day for 365 days? Maybe not. So then what happens is, is the parents learn how to cope in different ways. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's, they have the same lunch every day because they can't even think about what trying to give their kid new food because they might not like it. They might waste the food. Um, parents who struggle potentially with financial stuff because of the disability of like buying, you know, new clothes or, you know, more expensive um, things around their house that maybe the the student plays with. Um, But, you know, a lot of the times parents can get in their own way. Um, They can make things more difficult because, and it's not because of, they don't want it to be better it's because they're overwhelmed. It's a lot to take care of a person with a disability for long periods of time. Um, You know, we had students that we had to switch staff a lot because the student was difficult. And if you, and, and not difficult in the way of like, they were hurting you, but like, it takes a lot of patience. Um, And the point, you know, I always make is that we had kids that were, you know, 15 to 20. Imagine an 18 year old man, um, they don't want to do what you, what you tell them. They don't want to, you know, sit down when you ask, or like, you know, they might want to eat all day and they need boundaries and limits. Like even if their intellectual age is young, like three or four, they're in the body of an 18 year old. Um, and so balancing that, but anyway, back to the parents. Um, I just think that we really have to take, you know, culture into perspective. We have students who um, have, you know, are from different places and they're in their, um, where their parents are from, they might view disabilities very differently, um, either positively or negatively. Um, Or like right now, you know, I have a student who um, is struggling at home and mom doesn't have a lot of help with him. And, um, you know, he would be a good candidate for living somewhere where somebody can take care of him 24 seven. Um, but just think like for his mom to think about all the planning steps, to think about all of the things that that entails is very overwhelming, especially when he's right in front of her and she has to take care of him right now. She's thinking very much in the present when, you know, the future is, coming. It's always, you know, right around the corner. So, um, I would say we try our best to take in that perspective of the parent. Um, but you're right. There's a lot of times where I'm like, Oh, like, uh, like if we just did this, it would help you a lot. Or like, if you didn't worry about this, but everybody has their stuff. So, um, you know, I have, I have a group of, I have an interesting group of parents this like school year and it's been very hard, but very, um, telling, like I've learned a lot from communicating with parents who have been at home with their kids for over a year. Um, when previously they didn't go more than two weeks at being home because we were an all, all year school, year round school, and we would have two week breaks, but now we've been out of school for almost a year and the pers- my perspective has definitely changed on that too. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah Cause I, I felt like for me, because we spent so much time with the student for so long, um, we learned different from that. That's why I feel like 
some parents don't know just because we're we're pe- pe- like a second uh like a big brother or sister, sister yeah dude. so we catch things different that's why i was like i remember you would have meetings and i'd be like i don't agree with what the parents said because like, i'm like because i just know like the experience yep i was like yeah i, I mean and <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you kind of get that twitch of like, well, <laughs> and I think, you know, our students like routine, they like predictability, they like things to be the same. Um, and that, you know, if you spend a lot of time around someone with autism, and you're trying to keep things the same for them, it kind of rubs off on you. Like, so, you know, the parents want, at, you know, the least amount of um, difficulty for the, for their kid, like all parents do. Um, but if a kid wants something the same all the time, the parents probably going to want this, the things to be the same all the time. Um, I know from the pandemic, like I thought like, Oh my God, like, I'm so worried about this student, this, this student, they're fine. Like I, it was me worrying about them, you know, not being, safe and happy and all of those things when in reality it was more like oh they're a lot more flexible than we think and they've learned a lot too through this whole time but um you're right like sometimes with the parents it's just like but they just get stuck in their ways they get stuck in trying to accommodate for their kid even if it's changed because the kid has changed um like, you know, we had teenagers, they go through puberty, then they become adults and their, their development is changing. Like they're not fully developed humans yet. So it kind of is, uh, it is hard to, you know, accept what the parent says, but you really have to take into consideration, like all of the, all of the components of the student for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And honestly too, like I, I have something that I wanted to share. So yeah. remember the time I told you I went to Six Flags and Probably. I got, I got a picture of like three of my. Oh yes, 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 yes. So you so, still have those. You still have it? Of course. Oh, oh, that makes my, I have it in my room. Like I wake up every day I love that. and I look at it and I was like, man, I know they're doing good. Those are my, that's mm-hmm. my squad right there. That's your squad. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? And I felt like every student, that we had, they have, the way I see it, I'm very big into Marvel. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they all have a superpower. Absolutely. One can be really fast. You know, you know, some are so fast. I'm like, whoa. And the thing is, I, I practice running. You remember, Shannon, I used to yes. run after uh, work and I'd be, all right, guys, I'll catch y'all later. I'm going to run. <laughs> Someone just, the... yeah, you know. <laughs> What were you gonna say? Um, I was just going to say, like, for our job, like, chasing kids that are really fast and um, keeping up with them, we have to work out. Like, you have to run or do some sort of physical activity because if you're, you know, tired or you can't run very fast, like, they're going to outrun you. And that's the thing is, like, like you said, they all have their, their superpowers. The student that I'm thinking of that you might be thinking of, like, also did, like, parkour like he would like jump off of benches and jump really high and like um would like jump over everything and just like jump down like five or six stairs at a time and so you really have to be able to like keep up with him Uh, but yeah we definitely have that the the characters of those three guys still and um it always makes me laugh because it's just like one of those things where it's like david was thinking about the students when he was at six flags i think that's really awesome because it shows like how much you valued them and also like how positive the experience was because like i think a lot of the times teachers get tired and burnt out and you know um they try not to think about the students but i think that was really awesome that you were like oh my gosh you know who would like this these three guys and and they're all dressed up like superheroes. So it's, it's really, that's one of my, and that's why I keep it is because it's like such a positive memory. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. 
The last, the last question, Shannon, I'm going to yeah. share is what advice can you give to young people who want to teach? Well, first of all, it's, it is, ne- it's needed. There are teacher. we need teachers. We need people to support people with disabilities. Um, my advice would be to, how do I put this? Like to really enjoy the time with the students. There's a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of, you know, stuff where you're like, oh, I don't want to do that. Like, but the time with the students is always worth it. It's always, you know, um, our principal at the school might say like, oh, well, Shannon doesn't always turn in her paperwork right away. And it's like, cause I wanted to spend time and, and that's fine. Like I'll catch up on it, but I really enjoy spending time with the guys. Um, and you know, if that isn't, if it's not, um, you're calling like that's okay but it's really like the it, you get energy you get energy from them from seeing them grow from seeing them learn um and i think you just have to really take in the moments with the students that you're teaching i'd also say like you really have to take care of yourself because it is a very hard job um especially the past year you know everybody's kind of changed jobs. Like if you're doing remote, if you're doing hybrid, if you're working in a group home, if you're, um, you know, supporting students, I think you have to take care of yourself and that's the only way you're going to be able to be the best teacher. Um, but yeah, I, you know, my friends who are teachers are all amazing people. Teachers work so hard. Um, public school and private school, gen ed and special ed. Um, So yeah, I think that's, that's what I would say. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you. Yeah. So real quick guys, this is the outlet to reality. The whole this podcast in Vegas and Chicago Tuesday. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And you guys can find me on IG, the outlet to reality on TikTok at Yakov 28 and on Instagram. So catch y'all later. Spotify, YouTube. Peace.